asking about the last starting tackle. Was that because you were pumping up Nicholas? No. I don't think. What's today's date? The 5th? Yeah. It's the 5th. My wife gets back in town today. Um, Where's she at? She's in Canada. She's been in Canada since uh, June 14th. <clears throat> but no, that had nothing to do with that. I was. What I, you know. What I try to do is help Nick, help Dylan, help Tony, because um, I'm a tackle and I've been doing playing this game for a, a long time. I've been in this offense for a long time. I've been with Raves and Keith for a long time. So there's a lot of things that I know that they want that I can help with. So it's all about you know getting on guys when you when you need to and then gassing them up when you can too. You said you almost uh, caught the knee today. Did you talk through that? And, and what, no, it's just it's a, I didn't actually almost catch the knee today. It was. It's just a you know bloodbath out there when you got the pads on. Um, you know, usually uh, the first four or five days of pads are the most difficult, and then usually your body kind of calluses into it, or you kind of you know get used to the feeling of feeling that way, and then a team comes in. So I just you know a couple guys on the ground today, and I almost uh, it wasn't anything pressing at all. Who were uh, the guys you were talking about wanted to help some of the young linemen? Who were the guys that did that for you when you came in the league that you were? Yeah, I like to say Michael Ruse. I, I tell this story that I tweeted at him or DM'd him and said that, uh, hey, man, like I really want to learn the playbook, and I was hoping you and I could sit down together and really go over the playbook and figure it all out and maybe you could help me with some things, and he never responded and uh, to that DM, even after I saw him the next day and everything. But I think Ruse was, um, I think by far and away, just uh, from a maturity standpoint, he was where I'm at now when I came in and so, but even then, he was way more mature than I am now. Like, he was just seemed like a guy that had his stuff together, uh, very intelligent, knew the game of football, knew where to be, extremely consistent. So, you know, a guy can help another guy by just watching that person and watching what they do and how they uh, operate on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's what I did with Ruse quite a bit. And I'm sure he did that with B-Hop. And, you know, we've had a, a good, you know, 29 years of, Tackle is here, and it's you know it's it's an honor to play left tackle here. So it's good to watch those guys. Rogers is kind of a low grader playing next yeah. to you, a big guy. Now Brewer is yeah. a smaller guy. Does that change anything at all for you in terms of how things are blocked up and how things are done? Some things, yes. Some things will be different. You know, uh, Brewer's got a different skill set than Roger. Um, so yeah, some things, yes. Some things, no. Haskins after a run the other day just with him trying to fight somebody off of him. What have you mm -hmm. seen from him? How much have you taken an interest in him being a mission? You know, to be 100% honest, I don't really notice a whole bunch of guys unless you see like a deep ball or, um, you know, a guy get a pick or something like that or a guy winning in a game or a one-on-one. -on -one. That's really, when you're at this, this point, like for me, it's extremely important for the um, cohesiveness and the gel of the offensive line to really – start taking strides and, and uh, from a finish standpoint, from a fundamental standpoint. So, you know, I don't edge too far outside my lane when it comes to Son, though. You know, Michigan guy, he was, I think, the first Michigan guy in here since me. And, you know, you take pride in that. You see what he did against Ohio State. You, you rooted for him and watched him when he was playing college. And so, you know, you just kind of gas up the boy whenever he was around. He was rocking his little Michigan Block M sh shorts the other day, and I was – pumping him up so you know it's just cool it's just fun on the other hand with petite frere opposite school obviously yeah i mean what is he like he seems like such a mature uh, knowledgeable yeah I mean, like it, a rayman vibe exactly yeah is that how he is in that like he's room? super intellectual it's, yeah yeah he does kind of give off those that that vibe for sure he um smart he keeps to himself he, he asks good questions he knows the playbook pretty well for rookie he's um from a maturity standpoint, he seems much more developed than I was um, at that point, you know. But same goes for Dylan, too. I think Dylan uh, was just, you know, Midwest-type guy, you know, keeps to himself and intelligent and, and knew that. And so they seem very similar to me where they were both at their rookie year. How did they adapt to your kind of style of leadership? Because, look, you're a loud guy. That's who you are, right? Yeah, obnoxious, loud and obnoxious. You know, um, as you ask, you kind of – when you play football the way I do or how I do from a, you know, a unique – it's a unique because of being an offensive lineman and how I do run my mouth quite a bit and how I play. And so it can be different for some people. And you check in with dudes, and it's easy to find out what guys need if you ask them what they need. It's not like I'm over there guessing, well, and it seems like Nick needs this and Dylan needs that and 
Ben needs this from me. I literally go and say, hey, do you guys like it when I do X, Y, and Z? You know, sometimes, most of the time it's yes, and then sometimes like, hey, you know, I actually am better off this way, and I usually try to cater to those guys the best I can, because at the end of the day, like, we all have to work together real well. At this point, you enough, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I was going to ask, at this point in camp, you guys in the pads, are you guys getting to the point where you're looking forward to a preseason game or, or a joint practice? You know, some other I don't think you ever look forward to a joint practice. You never look forward to it. <laughs> then things are, it's like a lawless game. You know what I'm saying? You're out there in the Wild West. But, uh, no, you know, I mean, I think there's so much to get done. There's so much to do. There's so many things that t you can get better at on a day-to-day -day basis, especially from an offensive line, the way we play together, the way we finish. It doesn't – If this camp is going by very fast. But at the same time, it's like you almost want time to slow down a bit because there's, there's always so much to work on. And being prepared for that week one is so important – to not have to take a couple, one, two, three, four games to kind of get into a groove of things. We need to protect Tannehill now. We need to get Derek Yards now, and we need to finish now. So um, there's a sense of urgency with this offensive line that um, I'm really proud of. And it seems like guys come out every day to work, and when other guys aren't feeling it, there's, there's, there's guys there to pick them up. So um, I'm very proud of this, the way this offensive line is handling themselves. 15 20, 15, 20 snaps in the preseason help you get ready for the season, or you feel like you can get everything accomplished? Uh, you're on the practice. You know, we have uh, – our front seven is extremely good. And so, you know, if Rabel wants me to get 15, 20 snaps, I get 15, 20 snaps. If he doesn't, then he doesn't. Um, you know, with the defense we have and how they play, leadership like Jeffrey Simmons, Bud Dupree, Danico and Harold and, you know, David Long and da uh, Zach Cunningham, like those guys are, are uh, studs. And so you get your hands full every single day when you go out there to work. And so um, – I'm not I, – I think, you know, we'll see. Cohesiveness of the offensive line and, and wanting to see that. What does that look like on, like, a day-to-day -day basis or in live reps, in joint practices, et cetera? Uh, guys just knowing what to do and being fast and aggressive, understanding there's certain key points that Keith gives us on every single play. What is it? How do you identify that play? How does that play look? What if X, Y, and Z happens? If you're able to register that fast, know the snap count, and fire off the ball, then that is cohesiveness. And when five guys are doing that, that's good. That's good gel and good chemistry, and guys playing off of each other. You know, uh, we a lot of guys don't get the luxury of guys like me and Ben being able to play together for seven, eight years. I don't even know what it is now. It's been a long time of him and I being together. So a lot of times. Um, he knows what I'm going to do, and I know what he's going to do, and it's like getting these other guys who are maybe newer or whatever, Nate even too, um, everyone on the same page always, and I think it's going I, I think it's going well. We'll have to see every day is a new day. It's not like one of those things you just got it. You kind of got to, unfortunately, you gotta, unfortunately you got to earn that every day. It's not like a one one done thing. David, he just talked about how going up against this defensive front seven is, is great work every day. Uh, what are you all doing that uh, to try to build off of last year? Yeah. Um, I think just building a team now. I feel we had the pieces here, and it's just another year of, of building off where we left, you know, the last year. You know, I think we went off on a good note, um, didn't really come out our way. But, you know, still knowing we have the pieces and the people capable of getting the job done, now I just keep building that team. As you continue to stack practices with Zach Cunningham, how is that coming along as far as that chemistry and the ability to play off and complement each other? Uh, it's going along good, man. Um, we've been here, you know, last few weeks, uh, just even not just on the field, but in the meeting room as well, you know, just making sure we're on the same page, um, whether it's uh, any type of package or anything it is, you know, just making sure um, we uh, know the, the calls and you know, we can we can play off each other as well. Off season about wanting to be more of a vocal leader. Do you yeah. find yourself doing that more? Has it kind of been more natural? Yeah, uh, when it's needed. You know, I'm not about to be the rah-rah the guy, but, you know, when I see that, you know, my voice needs to, you know, step up and, you know, I need to say something, you know, or, or get them going, you know, I will. What do you see from some of the young guys uh, that are, you know, whether it's McCreary or, or Farley who's back in the mix? What have you seen from the young people um, on the defense? I think, I think they're picking up the standard, you know, as far as how we play on defense, you know, fast, physical, and, you know, with a little bit of swag. I think um, the guys that's coming along, you know, we still, you know, getting into the pads and stuff. But I think uh, especially in my, in my room um, with Gibby, you know, and, and Chance, you know, and then Roger out there making plays. I think the, the rookies are coming along and still, still making some plays. Still got a long way to go, though. What's been the key for you in the last year or so to be able to – 
improve as a pass defender enough that you're staying on the field in the sub package? Right. Um, I think just learning offenses, you know, just being more comfortable, playing out in space and, you know, um, going out the quarterback eyes and then just uh, taking coaching. I think, you know, just uh, all those, you know, adding into my game, you know, just paying attention to, you know, the guys that's been here, and, you know, just getting better. You know, that's why, you know, I can stay on the field, you know, and be able to play in passes and stuff like that. You know, just learning from the guys in front of me and, you know, also just adding to my game, whether, you know, I got three new coaches. You know, I've been – I had a new linebacker coach every year. You know, so just picking up, you know, any game they can give me, you know, just, you know, and giving it to my own. You mentioned Chance's name. Yeah. What have you seen out of him as a rookie? He's a guy who just seems to put his head down and go to work. Yeah, that's exactly what he is. Uh, he's smart. You know, uh, he's not running from no contact or anything. You know, um, he just is a guy that wants to learn. You know, him and Gibby, you know, guys that come in there early, you know, they, they, can, they can know the, uh, the plays, you know, before we do. Um, so that's just good. They can get in here and learn and, you know, still just building on uh, learning the defense as a whole. David, what have you seen from the secondary as a whole? How much of a compliment can they be to the front seven, you think? Um, I think that could be a big compliment. I think we all work together, you know, uh, especially, you know, with Hook, KB, you know, then AJ working his way in, you know, and Roger, I think he's out there on Nicky sometimes. So um, we all can, you know, uh, pick up that, that standard that we play at, you know, as, as dogs, you know, and just, and just keep it rolling. Hey, the word that comes up with Zach all the time is instinctive. How much have you seen that? What, what does that do for your job in particular? Um, I mean, I think we make both of our, our jobs easier. Um, when we play fast and instinctive, um, whether we can we can free up some blocks for the for the other person or, or just make the defense better as a whole. Um, you know, I think we like I said before, I think we both have a lot of similarities as far as like being instinctive, you know, downhill, you know, and aggressive. So, you know, as long as we play like that, I think we'll be all right. Taylor, Taylor Lewan said he is not a fan of joint practices. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I can't even remember how many you've done because it's been it's like the pandemic threw me off. But right. you're gonna have two this year. Do you guys look forward to that kind of work, or is that something you no, don't want to do? I do. I like the work. I like, uh, you know, sometimes you get a little, you know, a little uh, back and forth out there. You know, I like that. Just going against people that's not my teammates. You know, so now I can let a bit loose. I can go out there and talk some more stuff and, you know, get a little more bumps and stuff. You know, but I think it's good work, you know, early in the season. Because um, most of us not going to play the whole game. So we get our, our work out here on the field. So that's good. Nice to have it here at home. Yeah, we went to Tampa, Tampa man. Yeah. It was cooking out there last year. Um, so, we, I mean, it's hot here as well. So, uh, it's cool we don't have to travel, though. That's, that makes it better. What, what do you do to keep your body fresh and keep soreness away, you know, when you've got so many consecutive practices in the middle of camp? What, what do you do during off days? Um, that cold tub, even though it ain't – it don't it don't feel good all the time. But, you know, just consistently getting that cold tub and then getting in the, uh, the recovery boots and sleep. You know, whenever we get a chance, you know, get away from here, I go straight home, go to sleep. That's all. You always, did you always hate the cold tub? What was? Did you have um, to in high school I did, but when I went to college, I had to get used to it. And then when I got here, it was just more of you know just repetition and just keeping it, um, in my little you know my uh, my routine. David, what have you seen from Chig when you've matched up with him, and just when you've observed him out there? Um, he's a big body. Um, you know, he he can run as well. You know, he he can he can catch. He got soft hands. Uh, I think you know he's still working his way, just like all the the rookies. You know, just still finding that that tempo or you know that their groove in, in this. You know, it'll come along. We got the first game next week. You know, then we got two more after that. You know, so still still some time to go. Looking forward to that first. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm eager to see you know everybody get out there. You know we haven't played a game, especially the rooks, and you know, to see how they can you know, get out there and play against other teams and wrap up. You know it's, it's different when it's live. So, are you seeing any? How was practice today? I guess in short. Um, it's a wonderful question. Um, it, you know I mean like there is a lot of times there's some good stuff. I thought situations were good. I think that we, you know, at least had an understanding of what was going on from some of the short yardage stuff that we did, and then transitioning into. You know, longer, you know, third down, longer possession downs, um, but then having a segue to first and second, and then on the two minutes. So, you know, we'll, we'll continue to rep these things. And there was, you know, like like a lot of things, there was a lot of good things, and there were some some plays that we made on offense, which are, you know, not going to be good on defense. We turned the ball over on offense, which um, is going to be something that we're going to have to do defensively. But, you know, offensively, that's just going to going to hurt us. A little bit of a change up today, but how is that coming for you? Uh, just to, you know, I think it was pretty much something we're trying to do just to to make sure that everybody's having a, a chance that Nick and Dylan are, are competing. 
and we'll see where that goes here through the rest of the preseason. Did Nick maybe get more of a, more of a chance today? And uh... Well, I think that's where we're at now. I think that that's something that, you know, to, to have a competition, I think you're going to have to put guys in a similar situation. So, you know, that's where we are, you know, as of today. How'd you feel on the uh, Burks and, uh, um, his name. no, Burks and defensive cornerback? What? Farley. Farley, thank you. Burks and Farley matchup today. You guys been here long? First day? I, got into the weekend, so. I couldn't tell. Uh, you know, never going to be about one matchup here. So, you know, we weren't able to score there at the end in the two minute situation. And, you know, I think throughout camp, guys have made plays. And, you know, that's, that's what happens in this league. Sometimes guys make plays. You, you get beat. You have to come back, uh, make a mistake. You have, you have to come back and, and try to get back to neutral. We, we know that this, these games are, uh, you know, groups of um, a lot of plays. And uh, one play can't define us. You know, so whether Traylon had a, had a good play or, you know, Caleb made a nice play, you know, that's going to go on throughout the front, you know, offensive and defensive lines, um, you know, tight ends and safeties. Those are all the matchups that, that occur. So that's just one small matchup out here in practice. How do you feel about Racy and kind of what he's done, seeming to emerge more as an offensive weapon and the deep threat and kind of what he brings to, to the offense? Well, the more, you know, when you take advantage of your opportunities and you start to show up and you make plays, uh, and, you, and you know where you're supposed to be, and the quarterback starts to build some trust with you, um, you, you get more opportunities. So I think that's a, a situation of, of a lot of those things happening for Racy, and, and we're trying to take advantage of, of his skill set and you know the momentum that maybe he's had here the last couple of days. Regen days, Mike, and how much do they help maybe guys recover and still get work in? I mean, those would be questions, I think, for the players to try to see, but... Um, you know, typically, uh, Jim, what we try to do is come in, have a meeting, have some sort of um, situational squad meeting where I'll present. Um, you know, give an opportunity to go into an offense and defensive unit meetings, um, do a lift with the recovery lift that Frank has for him and the strength staff. Um, whatever dynamic warm up or movement that they have, yoga, lifting. Um, and then we'll try to go back into meetings and then, and then walk through and try to get them out of here and get them on their feet. And obviously, you know, a lot of treatment through those days. Mike, how do you feel about Ryan's decision making in this camp, maybe compared to other, you know, what you've seen from him in the past? I think it's been good. I think he's been pretty decisive. I think he's uh, been very accurate on days. I know, you know, he had the interception yesterday that he tried to, you know, get the ball, you know, layered over, over Kevin's head. Um, but I would say that all in all, he's, he's been pretty accurate. I really kind of like where his his tone is and, and the way that he's talking to those, you know, skilled players that he's throwing to. It's a, it's a big group. So in any snap, he could have a different combination of guys, maybe a, you know, a lot less than what would be in the season. Um, and, and I hear coaching. I hear him talking, you know, and I hear, you know, so when your quarterback does that or your position players, you know, do that, let's say Kevin Byard or David Long, Jeff, you know, then really we don't need to uh, to say anything. And Ryan's, you know, telling those those guys where he wants them, and you know, if there's a correction that needs to be made, you see some of those things being done in those group periods. What do you remember about Richard Seymour as a player, maybe as a teammate, and, and kind of cool? I think just from an early, um, you know, from an early on perspective, he just was so mature. You know, he was just came in and he had just just this unbelievable stature, size, um, build to him, length, and and just. But mature, you know, didn't act like a, you know, a kid that was, you know, 20 or 21 years old. Uh, powerful, great teammate. Uh, was really, really fun to play with. Was really uh, instrumental in my my development there as, as an outside linebacker, having you know luxury of playing next to him. How much you just is talk David about a, a good finish for Hassan Haskins on one of his run there. I mean, just what has he done so far in camp that you, that you've seen in a day like this where Derek's not out there. Yeah, I think just trying to get more decisive in those runs and making sure that, that you know, those holes or those cuts aren't going to be there forever and, and just making sure that, you know, that he's coming back and wherever he's cutting, making making a, a good violent cut, getting his pads down, uh, protecting the ball and, and finishing, um, you know, on contact. How much has David Long progressed over the last couple of years as a pass cover guy enough so that he can stay in in the sub packages a lot? Well, um, I would just say his overall growth and development since we've got him, he's always been an instinctive player and, 
you know, always been able to find the ball. I think the understanding of our defense has really improved. You know, say, listen, you know, get the call, know what you're supposed to do. If you get, you know, when you get lined up in the right spot, then we kind of have to, as coaches, kind of let him go. And if he's not lined up in the right spot, probably, you know, going to need to coach him. But, you know, there's a lot of things that he does that are very instinctive. And, you know, he's not the fastest player, but he challenges guys. And it, it, whether that's tight ends or running backs, try to, um, you know, get his hands on them or, or however, whatever techniques that's being asked of him. The Wild's brand of leadership maybe isn't for everybody, but you see him doing more of it. I've heard and seen him. Kind of I usually like... always hear him, but I think that, um, you know, there, there he brings an energy, you know, that um, that is critical in, in training camp and practice and, you know, just looking for some consistency that we told him, you know, just, you know, that's great. Be the same guy every single day. Um, and it's important. And that type of... Uh, you know, energy and attitude and leadership is, is critical, you know, that it stays there each and every day.